Welcome back to science class. Um, I miss seeing you guys and girls. I hope everybody's doing well. Hope, hope everyone is um, getting better at uh, checking in on the Google Classroom for other teachers and Schoology for myself and finding you know everything that they need to help them. Well, today we're going to cover the last part of chapter 16. It's section three. It's on reptiles. We just finished amphibians. And so I thought we'd begin by comparing amphibians to reptiles. Um, and then, you know, just focus on the reptiles. So I've got a poster uh, that's really nice to have for this that compares the amphibians and the reptiles. The reptiles are on the top of the poster and the amphibians are on the bottom. As you remember, amphibians include frogs and toads, salamanders, and I mentioned newts. Those are a type of salamander. In the middle, what's really nice is they put what the two different animal types have in common. They both have backbones and they're both cold-blooded or ectothermic. And then they have um, just what's unique to the amphibians here and what's unique to the reptiles up here. And so let's look at the amphibians first since we just finished them. Again, remember, they have smooth, moist skin. They lay those jelly, sticky eggs in the water. And then they're so interesting and unique because they start out as a water animal and then become a land animal through a process that we call metamorphosis. And that shows right here um, the eggs and then the tadpole again developing and then eventually, you know, the adult um, frog. Reptiles, on the other hand, uh, have dry, scaly skin. So their, their skin is um, like a watertight protective layer for them. Their eggs are very different. They don't have the stickiness to them, and they're not hard-shelled like a bird egg. They're leathery, so the shell is sort of like leather, and they lay their eggs on land, and we're going to talk about their eggs being amniotic. And then when they do hatch from their eggs, they don't go through metamorphosis. They look just like a miniature version of what they'll look like as an adult reptile. And of course, with reptiles, we have sea turtles and tortoises, which live on land. We have crocodiles and alligators. The crocodiles have the long, narrow snout, and the alligators have a wider snout. And then, of course, we have our snakes and lizards. And there's, uh, I have also put up a picture here of a lizard. So we have some interesting animals uh, in the reptile um, category. Some people like to have reptiles as pets, especially snakes and lizards and turtles. Um, I used to have um, a bearded dragon, a lizard, um, but do not currently have any pet reptiles. And I'm sure quite a few, I know quite a few of my students have or have had pets uh, that were reptiles. We're going to get our book, um, so if you have your book handy, get your book out, and we're going to turn to um, page 426, and just like we did with the amphibians, we're, I'm going to go through, show you some of the pictures, hit the highlights, um, and then of course leave you to um, read it yourself after we, you watch the video, and answer your notes, and then again, send me a picture to show me that you did complete your notes. And then the next day, I will upload the answers to the notes. Um, Schoology, again, lets me know whether or not you have watched the video. And you may already know I'm giving classwork grades. Once you watch a video of a lesson, I will give you a 100 for a classwork grade um, to go into your average for this term, which will be very helpful. And it, it also lets me know not the fact that you watched it, but also how much of the video that you watched. So like if you only watched part of it, but not all of it, it also lets me know that. 
So make sure you keep up by watching the videos. I try to do them and record them so that you can watch them later on. Um, if you, you know, when it's convenient for you, um, try to work it into your schedule. And again, so that, you know, you can watch it again and um, help, help use it as a review. So let's look at the reptiles on uh, page 426. All right. So starts off talking about the difference between amphibians and reptiles, which we did, just did with our poster there. Got a nice picture of a crocodile getting into the water and a green snake um, called an uh, emerald boa. That's really pretty colors on that snake. And a giant tortoise. Um, a giant tortoises uh, were discovered in... Uh, when Darwin went to the Galapagos Islands. So land, the fact that, that uh, these reptiles can live on land, they're well adapted to that. I want you to look at the reptiles and think about this a minute. Besides what I just said about the dry, scaly skin, they have lungs, of course they breathe air. Um, they have short, if they have legs, of course snakes don't have legs. But think about the ones that do have legs, the crocodile, the turtle, and think about lizards. They have really short legs, and their bodies are low to the ground. So when they're standing up, they stay low to the ground. I mean, think about that in comparison to a mammal, for example. Mammals um, have longer legs and are up higher off the ground. So it's, uh, they're uniquely designed, God uniquely designed them, um, to live um, and function as a land animal, but to also be able to stay close to the ground um, where their food is. And of course, the snakes with no legs have um, a really unique, flexible backbone for them to be able to, to coil and, and, you know, twist and wiggle and turn the way that they do. So they're really interesting, and, well, I think all of God's animals are interesting. But, um, again, the reptiles um, are unique in and of themselves. Of course, the most famous reptiles that we're probably all aware of are the dinosaurs. Um, now, some people argue that dinosaurs are more like birds than reptiles. And that, that's a debate uh, still, somewhat. Um, but here our book does mention dinosaurs as being reptiles. So we're going to move over to the next page where it talks about the characteristics. We have a really neat picture here of another snake. And snakes come in, as you saw on the green boa in the previous page, a lot of, uh, a lot of colors. Uh, some, some of them are quite colorful. Um, reptiles have very thick skin which protects them from their environment and helps them conserve water. They have um, lungs that they breathe with. I mentioned that a moment ago. And also, they do not regulate their body temperature well. They're cold-blooded or ectothermic. So if they're hot, they try to get to a place where it's cooler. Or if they're cold, they try to get to a place where it's warmer. They have the eggs that we mentioned uh, when we looked at the poster that are like leather. You see the picture of the amphibian eggs on the left compared to the reptile eggs there on the right. And I mentioned earlier as well that they're amniotic eggs, meaning that they are well adapted to land. They have a lot of fluid in them. We'll show that in the, in the next page. We'll look at the parts of the amniotic egg. But that egg is what enables the reptile to be successful land animals because they can lay it on the ground. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this over. And let's look at that egg. If you look over here to the left, it has, of course, a shell that's labeled here. We've got an embryo on the inside. And you know the part of the egg that when we cook it turns white, we call it the white of the egg? That is the albumin, and it has water and protein in it for the embryo. 
Um, the amniotic sac is just this little sac that surrounds the embryo while it's growing and protects it. Oh, this. This is the yolk. And, of course, you know what the yolk of an egg is. And it's a food supply. That's where a lot of the protein. That's why eggs have a lot of protein for us when we eat an egg because of the yolk. Um, the allantois is the part that gets rid of the embryo's wastes. So that's the parts of the amniotic egg. Reptiles have internal fertilization. So um, that, that occurs internally, and then the, the uh, reptile lays its egg on land, and then it finishes developing inside the egg. Probably one of the most well-known reptiles is the chameleon. And they're pretty, I always like to watch them move their eyes. So let's talk about the kinds of reptiles. Um, turtles and tortoises. Again, sea turtles. And um, everybody, of course, thinks of, you know, like Finding Nemo and, and the sea turtles in that movie. Uh, and tortoises live on land. Both of them have a hard shell. Well, both of them have a shell. The tortoise has a harder shell. Uh, the sea turtle shell is not as hard because it lives on the water. And um, if it was too hard and too heavy, you know, it would give it, it'd weigh it down more and wouldn't be as um, buoyant. So its shell is not as hard as the land tortoise shell. But both of them, the shell protects them from predators, helps protect them. And a lot of people have pet tur turtles, and um, I um, have friends who have had pet turtles over the years. They're kind of hard to keep and maintain. Crocodiles, I hope, I hope nobody I know has a pet crocodile or alligator. For one thing, it's illegal, <laughs> but and they don't make good pets, obviously. <laughs> um, but, you know, they are, they are, you know, for the reptiles, they're the biggest um, and, of course, they're, um, you know, predatory animals, and they can move really fast. The crocodile is, of course, the one that has the narrow snout. We don't see crocodiles in the United States, not native to the United States. Um, they are in Africa. What do we see, though, in the United States are alligators. We have American alligators and they have the wider snout, and they do live in swamp areas um, here in the U.S., and they, a lot of them, the Everglades in Florida, um, very common in that area. Snakes. A lot of people are afraid of snakes. A lot of people like snakes. Um, cobras, of course, are some that we're very familiar with. Uh, milk snake below that. Looks a lot like the coral snake, but um, it's not a coral. Coral snakes are the most uh, venomous snakes as far as I'm aware of. Um, snakes, um, of course, don't have legs. And um, there are a few species that give live birth. Most of them lay eggs. But there's a few water snakes that give live birth. Most of the things that they eat, in case you're wondering, small insects and worms and like mice and eggs of other animals. Oh, one uh, one animal that's uh, one reptile. I wish we had a picture of it here, but we don't. Is the uh, Komodo dragon? It is a giant lizard. Um. And it eats big animals like deer and pigs. Um, look up the Komodo dragon. That's a really uh, interesting, huge-looking, like, lizard. There's a lizard right there. Um, some of them have some unique features. He will puff out and make himself look bigger and scarier if a predator is trying to get to him. That's um, why he does that. And then there's uh, the thorny devil. It's a horned is a little horn lizard um, that eats ants. He's pretty harmless. Um, the tuatora's is on the last part of our section here. The tuatora 
um, they live in New Zealand, they live in the islands, um, is uh, a lot like, he looks a lot like lizards, um, but he's classified differently because he doesn't have ear openings. Now, if we go back, I don't know if we can see an ear opening on um, this picture. I don't see one or that one. It's kind of hard to see. But lizards have, um, where you can see on the outside of their body, ear openings. But the tuatoras don't have that. So they separate them out from the lizards. And they also like to sleep. Uh, they like to sleep during the day. And they're active at night. And there's a lot of reptiles that are active at night, depending on where they live. If they're a desert reptile, they're more active at night than they are during the day. When it's hot, they rest during the day and then come out at night and look for food. Um, depends on the type of reptile and where it lives, its habitat. So read the section in your book on reptiles and, and work on your notes. And like I did with the amphibians, I will upload the answers to those notes. And then I'll probably ask you, you know, to maybe again just show me a picture to see, so I can see that you did complete the notes. Um, I like to make these recorded videos for y'all because I know that you can fit them in your daily schedule when that works best for you. And also you can watch it again and help you, uh, you know, review it or maybe catch some part of it you didn't quite catch the first time around. I hope you um, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we will be soon. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is reviewing this chapter and getting ready for a chapter test.